second preseason game was U-G-L-Y, but the Broncos had an alibi and it was called playing their backups. But it's a new week and another game, the final preseason contest, and it's uber important for the guys just trying to make the squad. This is the MHR News Room with Mile High Reports, Lori Lattimore Volkman. Broncos country, I'm Lori Lattimore Volkman, and this is The Roundup. After a not so good showing in Buffalo, the Broncos are moving forward, and practice this week has been twofold. For the starting offense and defense, it's been about tuning up before the first regular season game in two weeks. For the guys trying to make the squad, it's about getting some playing time so they get on the field Saturday to make their case to be one of the 53. NFL teams must trim their roster by Tuesday, August 30th, and that means going from 80 players to 53. Head coach Nathaniel Hackett said he and the coaches have a lot of tough choices ahead this week, but a big part of their decision will be who can contribute on special teams. Yeah, those are the fun battles that we start getting into. Um, you know, everybody wants the guys that, you know, they potentially want, and there's definitely a battle. Um, but it is a three-phase game. Uh, that's something I've always believed in. Uh, I, I love special teams, was a part of special teams, coached special teams, and uh, I think that you definitely have to take that into perspective. If there's somebody that's going to offer you a dynamic player, a playmaker in that role on that phase, you definitely have to take that into consideration. The head coach also announced that the starting QB this weekend against Minnesota will be Brett Rippin as the battle for backup quarterback continues in Denver. Yeah, you know, I think both of those guys have done a good job, and I think Rip has earned an opportunity to be able to go the first half. Uh, I think he had a really good game last week. He's improved, and again, we're looking for consistency from that position. Um, it's not saying that Josh hasn't done good, because he has done a fine job. Uh, we just want to be sure we get both those guys, because they've been working so hard and pushing each other, and that competition is a great one. We want to make sure that, you know, the guys that deserve that opportunity get it. Rippin said he is obviously looking forward to his opportunity and made some interesting comments about who has influenced him and helped him the most in his time in Denver. Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting. Um, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to start in this league, I don't care if it's a third preseason game or the Super Bowl, uh, you know you're excited. So, um, you know, it's been a been a hell of a camp. Been a lot of ups and downs, but, uh, you know, I'm excited for this opportunity. And yeah, sure. I think I just want to get better, honestly. Like, that's the only thing I'm thinking of is, you know, how can I somehow get better this week and, uh, you know, go out there and play like it's my last game ever. And really, that's the mentality I think you take into every single day. You know, I think if there's one thing I've learned about the NFL, you know, you can't take any day for granted out here. And, um, you know, I'm working my butt off every single day to try to be the best player I can possibly be. So when I go out on a Saturday, it's going to be the same thing. I mean, we've been making each other better every single day. I think, you know, we have such a great relationship, our whole entire quarterback room. Um, you know, it's really one of the best rooms I've ever been a part of. And I learned so much just because they have such great experience, uh, such great knowledge of the game. Josh has been in, you know, probably every system you could possibly imagine. So uh, he knows a lot of ball and same with Russ, obviously. And Russ has such a good grip on this offense and, you know, where he wants it to go and, you know, what we want to do ultimately as a team. So, you know, for me, it's been a lot of learning and uh, soaking in as much information as I can. And honestly, that's been nice. Um, you know, just being around guys that have that much knowledge. Um, ultimately, like, you know, the footwork and everything that I've been working on has really come from Coach Hackett and Coach Kubiak. Um, and uh, back to really what I was doing more so my rookie year with Rich Scangarillo and uh, being in this offense, this West Coast style offense. So, um, you know, it's a really a timing and rhythm based offense. It's something that I'm very comfortable with. And, um, you know, it's been, been, been a great uh, thing to be a part of. Hilariously, there was zero mention of Pat Shermer as if that's a surprise to anyone. Anyway, moving on, moving past that train wreck. There are plenty of other important battles to watch this weekend as well, including cornerback, defensive line, and of course, wide receiver. At quarterback, defensive coordinator Ajiro Evero explained how valuable Caden Stearns has been this year to his defensive scheme, especially in the dime package. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a challenge, and uh, I think it kind of shows uh, what kind of uh, person he is and how smart he is to be able to handle all that because uh, it really isn't for everybody, and uh, he's done a good job. Uh, the ability to cover, um, you know, that's why we got to get to that package, cover, he can blitz. He could be a linebacker that gives you a little bit better coverage. Along the defensive line at defensive end, rookie Matt Henningsen is turning some heads at camp and maybe pushing for a starting role. Yeah, I mean, just steady improvement. Uh, 
it was tough to evaluate him in the spring just because he was out with the injury. Um, but uh, since he's gotten back for camp, it's just every day is better. And like, it's very, very rare to find a player that doesn't really take a step back where you'll have a good day and a bad day. And then, you know, he's just steady improvement and he's been getting better and better and uh, really like where he's going. Looking to the wide receivers, Coach Nathaniel Hackett noted what a tough choice it's going to be and hinted that a lot of guys who don't make the Broncos squad are likely to make another NFL team. Yeah, I mean, both of the, all those guys, like we said, I mean, right when you think there's going to be some kind of a separation, um, it's not necessarily that somebody took a step back, but other guys are pushing even harder, and that's what you're looking for. So I think both those guys, you saw Seth had that great catch for a touchdown. Kendall had an amazing go right on the left side of the, the first game, and, um, you know, the, the, it's every day just those guys pushing each other, and I think that all these guys have a chance to be able to play in the NFL. One of those wide receivers, Brandon Johnson, who seems to have a little bit of an edge among those fighting for the last couple of spots, spoke with Phil Milani earlier this week and talked about his mindset heading into the final preseason game. Just try to prove myself, you know, any way I could, you know, in meetings, how I meet, uh, on the field, route running, catching the ball, special teams, just, just trying to prove myself any way I can. I, they, they said everything counts and everything's being evaluated, so just trying my best. And when a guy this offseason like Russell Wilson gives you a shout out in front of the media, it says keep, a guy, keep an eye on 89, what did that do for you? It was super humbling and, you know, you, I couldn't imagine, you know, I'd be, you know, hearing something like that from Russell Wilson, um, you know, before, before, my, before I come in here. So, you know, just, just take it in and keep working. Johnson, who went to high school with Pat Sertan, is the cousin of Chad Johnson and also was recruited to play in college by his current wide receivers coach, Zach Azani, understands that there's only so much he can control as he heads into this final weekend of preseason. Focus, the focus was really just doing my best, doing my part. I never really looked at it as like, oh, okay, uh, you know, it's my time not a shot. No, I just, it just, I want to, I wanted to continue to do my best. It's hard to predict how this wide receiver room will play out, but so far, Kendall Hinton and Brandon Johnson have been the two to get reps with the first team offense most of the time. Of course, Montreal Washington, with his contribution on special teams, is likely a lock as one of the wide receivers. Where he falls in the depth chart among that group is yet to be seen. On the starter side of the wide receiver room, KJ Hamler is one who could get some playing time this weekend. With a major injury last year that took him out for the year, he has been battling back all offseason and preseason to get back on the field. Both Hamler and Hackett are excited to have some reps this Saturday. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, he is, is getting into the football shape, him getting out there, being in full pads, watching him run. You definitely feel some of that speed uh, that he has and that he brings and just kind of the attitude he brings. I mean, he, he's great to have out there. And, uh, you know, he's just going to have to continually build into it. Yeah, I think he's going to get a couple snaps. We're, we're going to try to get him in there. It's been a while since he's played. Yeah, um, you know, I don't, I don't mind playing, you know, just to, you know, go out there and get a feel for it again. You know, I've been doing team reps as well out here, so – you know, that'd be my first game since the injury happened. So, you know, whatever coaches want me to do, I'll do it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be excited if I play a little bit. You know, I don't know how long he want me to play or if he even want me to play. You know, but if he does, it's fine. Would it feel would like... like to play? Yeah, I'll play. There's nothing wrong with that. It's football. But would you like to play? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Broncos country, let's move on from the preseason and looking at guys who are just hoping to make the team to the group of guys who are definitely wearing orange and blue come early September. We have a heck of a 17 game schedule and we have a heck of a starting quarterback to lead us. Rich Eisen was on his radio show earlier this week and he's interested in what the Broncos are doing. Not quite ready to believe that Russ Wilson can lead them to the promised land. I would love for nothing more than the Denver Broncos fans in my life to be happy and for me to be wrong that this is not going to be their year. This is going to be, I think, an adjustment year for a lot of people. And the whole business of let Russ cook. The number of the times that, that you would see of the third and six, third and seven run, you know, I'm assuming will be over. Like, let him run. Let him see. Let's see what he does. He's no longer the young kid who, who got drafted by the team and got the opportunity from his old school head coach. And, and he's, he's, he's a good kid making good. Now he's the Super Bowl winning veteran being brought here in a monster trade to be the guy. 
and run the offense. And there's there will not be a single moment where like, boy, the Broncos are holding Russ back. I mean, there won't be a single there won't be a single scintilla of that. So let's see what it looks like without that. That's why it's fast. And then of course, my friend and yours, Dan Orlovsky, was back on the sports shows this week peddling his promotion of the Broncos to win the AFC West. Something we always like to hear. But last week he talked about it being a running game that would push us ahead of the Chiefs, the Chargers, and definitely the Raiders. This week, he's touting our defense. But somebody's going to be a disappointment then in the AFC West. Yeah. What team? I mean, well, I think that I do not expect the Raiders to be a, a playoff team. I think that the Raiders are going to be really good offensively. Um, but I do believe the back end of their defense will will kind of be the the fall off of their team. Um, I think that it's, it could be that division that gets three teams into the playoffs. I'm still really, really, really high on the Chiefs. Um, but my my thing on the Chiefs would be this. Um, <clears throat> they, I think more than anybody, maybe them in Green Bay, are going to be so dependent on their rookies playing really, really high-end football. I mean, McDuffie, their corner, who's either going to play outside or nickel inside, is going to have to play high-end ball because Darvarius Ward went to San Francisco, who is their best cover guy. Okay, I'm not discrediting Teron Matthew not being there. I know Justin Reed's going to be really good, but he will lead their defense. They don't have two edge rushers. George Karlaftis is going to have to be like TJ Watt, essentially. And I don't know if he's going to be that guy, you know? So um, I, while I'm really high on the Chiefs still, I just don't... I, I, I think that I like the Broncos' defense better. Let's go out here and let's be us. If you ain't never been here, follow the guys that's been here. We're going to lead you. We're going to lead you all together. Let's do this as one. Let's go Broncos on three. One, two, three. Broncos. Okay, Broncos country, that's it for this week's roundup. Next week, we will know our full 53-man squad. And we'll be ready to get this championship season started. But just before I go, enjoy these clips of everyone's favorite quarterback, but who belongs to us, Peyton Manning and his new ad campaign for the NFL. As expected, they are brilliantly humorous. All right, here we go. The sheriff is here. That's me. I'm the sheriff. We're going to do things the old school way, the tried and true football way. We had to show them how we play. Come to find out, I'm a natural touchdown dancer. He was terrible. Right? He's good. He's good. Always hear you kids talking about this is fire, that's fire. Okay, let me tell you what's fire. Conditioning. Everybody knows us Mannings are in peak physical form. What? Except Peyton. <clears throat> I did the other 99 earlier. Personal best here. <laughs> He's got potential. He's just old. You okay, man? Oof. Love you, Peyton. The coach also announced that this week the starting QB will be at quarterback, defensive. Oko Cinco. Ocho. Papers. That, that. I don't like that. It's hard to predict how this wide receiver. 